Welcome to everybody who's here. Welcome to everybody who's joining us through live stream. It is great to have you all with us. Just a few short announcements before we begin because there's not a whole lot going on right now, but there's a few things going on. Of course, if you have not seen it on uh, Facebook or any of our other social media, or you haven't driven by the church, the labyrinth is done. It looks great out there, don't you think, John? Don't... Excellent. It looks yeah. great. Yeah. It looks absolutely wonderful. Did you see it out there? It's, it's incredible. Uh, just in this past week, I've been in the office, of course, and I'm, there's like multiple people who've been walking it every day. So it has just been incredible. It looks wonderful. The job is done. I'm really happy with it. I hope everybody else is. We are doing the uh, rededication and blessing of it on September 13th. So be keeping that in mind. Uh, that would be kind of a fun day. I did hear that the churches, uh, our, our number of people who are going to be in church is starting to fill up. If you would like to come on that particular Sunday, make sure you let Gene Sando know ASAP. If we all of a sudden fill up, uh, we can still do the dedication outside. We don't have to have a limit necessarily on those numbers. So that will be happening about 1215, I believe, or so thereabouts on the 13th of September. So you could just come by, make sure you're wearing your mask, make sure you keep social distancing, and we'll do it out on the lawn. So that will be wonderful. Uh, of course, we do have our Wednesday night mass, as we have uh, been doing. That, of course, is open as well, to, uh, as long as people are following the protocols for social distancing and COVID and all of that. Uh, so we are doing that on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock, as we have been. You do not need to let Gene Sando know if you're coming to that service. Uh, I believe that's about it that I can think of. We, I do, we, we do have a vestry meeting today, of course, as well. If there's anything you would like for us to discuss in our vestry meeting, send uh, Gene Sando or just myself a text message or an email or something. Just let us know in some way. We'll make sure that uh, we get it on the agenda. Don't uh, don't use it as a uh, a response on the live stream. That's probably not the way to do it. But just send a message to us in some way, and we'll make sure that it gets on uh, on the agenda today. I think that's about it. With that, we will begin our service. Are 
Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that your church, being gathered together in unity by your Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look at the earth beneath, for the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. Hear what the Spirit says to God's people. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is on page four of the bulletin. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will march on towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I call, you answer me. You increase my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the praise of the Lord. That great is the Lord of the Lord. Though you are high, you care for the lowly. You perceive the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your mighty hand shall save me. O Lord, you will make good your purpose for me. Your love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. 
For by the grace given to me, I say to you, everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with somber judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elisha, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, this past week, uh, I had a very good and very long overdue conversation with a priest colleague of mine. Uh, she has been a longtime friend of mine and one that I, uh, I like to hear from because of her perspective. It's, a, it's such a fresh perspective, if at times it might be a little bit different than my own, and that's a, that's a good thing, I guess. In addition to being a good friend and listener to me, she is also one of the most liberal clergy people I know. That's coming from me. That's saying a lot. <laughs> If you think I was liberal, you'd be shocked, maybe by some of the things my friend would say. Maybe you wouldn't, actually. Uh, but that actually came up in our conversation, my, my liberalness and her liberalness. At some point in the conversation, she said to me, I've always admired your ability to sort of straddle the liberal and the conservative aspects of the church. I'm shocked by that. I've never <laughs> considered myself that in any way, shape, or form. And, uh, and I've just never seen myself doing that in my career as a priest. But she went on to explain that while, yes, I am a very, quote unquote, liberal priest on many issues, such as LGBTQ and uh, inclusion in the church and the inclusion of women in ministry, I am also a very devout and very unapologetic and very vocal Anglo-Catholic, as you also know. Spiritually, I tend to be somewhat conservative. I don't really like that term. I would say more traditional. And maybe even as my friend pointed out, this was the word she used, I may be a bit pious. I don't like that word, and I don't consider myself pious in any way, shape, or form, but you kind of get where she's going at with this. Um, I am very progressive on the social aspects of the church, but I'm also traditional, and I prefer those terms, progressive and traditional, rather than conservative and liberal, because they have become so politicized right now in our society. Uh, and certainly I'm more traditional when it comes to liturgy, uh, certain teachings, like the incarnation of Jesus, 
uh, the real presence of Jesus in the bread and the wine of the Eucharist, and of course the role of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the saints in the role of the church. And I am very traditional on all of those issues, as you very well know. Let's face it, when the day is done, I am a very solidly traditionalist, uh, um, celibate Anglo-Catholic priest who believes in the full inclusion and acceptance of all people in the church. That is me in a nutshell, which is very hard to do, put me in a nutshell. Uh, you know all of those things about me, and that, I guess, is what makes me sort of the walking, talking conundrum that is your priest. Now, my friend likes to joke about that celibate aspect of my life. She said to me, very tongue-in-cheek, and she, she thinks that's just a bizarre thing. She goes, it must be so hard to be married not only to Jesus, but to his church as well. <laughs> the Jesus part actually isn't that hard. Uh, he's a very good spouse, actually. <laughs> but the church aspect of that is very, very hard. And sometimes I realize that being a priest often feels like I am married to the church, capital C, the wide church. And like any marriage, there are good days to that, and there are some really very, very bad days to that. Now, I know this might come as a shock to uh, to you. I know it will. I know you're going to be completely shocked to your core. But I do not like authority. I know that's so hard to believe. I do not like authority. I do not like being told what to do. As many parishioners, many of you who are here this morning, and a few bishops over the years have tried and miserably failed, I hate to say, to do over the years, I do not respond well to being told what to do. I don't respond well to nagging or unconstructive criticism or complaining or any of those things. I never have. I probably never will. I will respect authority. I am a good Anglo-Catholic after all. I will follow the rules within reason, but let me tell you, I don't always like it. And sometimes I make that known. S sorry if you have to be on the receiving end of that. There are days when I don't like the church, capital C, or the authority of the church, or the hypocrisy of the church. There are days when I don't really like some bishops or some fellow clergy, especially when bishops act pompous and full of themselves and when clergy act like weasels. And sometimes they do. There are days when I don't like church leaders, not just ordained ones, but lay leaders as well, who coerce and manipulate the church and its ministers. And there are a lot of those out there. There are a lot of those lay leaders in the church as well. Probably most of us here would say that we, have, we feel somewhat the same way about the church at times. In fact, I know you have, because that is why you are here at St. Stephen's. There, that is a major reason why a lot of people come to St. Stephen's. There are days when we all groan when we see or hear other Christians get up and speak on behalf of the rest of us. We are seeing it now, especially in, 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 right now in spades in this country. Other Christians speaking on behalf of other Christians that don't reflect us. There are days when we are embarrassed by what some Christians say or do on behalf of, of Christianity, of Jesus and of his church. There are days when we get frustrated, when we hear clergy or other authorities pronounce decrees that in no way reflect our own particular views or beliefs. And there are times when we get downright mad at the hypocrisy, the homophobia, the misogyny, the ambivalence, the silence in the face of oppression and evil and war, the downright meanness we experience from the church. And most of us, idealistically, Naively, maybe, wonder to ourselves, wait a minute, the church isn't supposed to be like this. The church, isn't, the church is supposed to be a place of love and acceptance and compassion and inclusion. It is supposed to be a place where everyone is welcomed and loved. Knowing that and comparing the ideal view of the church with its shortcomings only makes us feel more helpless, listless, angry, and disgruntled. And you know what? That's all right. It's all right to feel those things. I personally think that's a somewhat healthy way of looking at the church, especially when the church is not living up to its ideal. Because we have to remind ourselves of one thing. What we find ourselves turning away from when we're angry at the church, and, we, 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 and what we are tempted to run away from, is not God. It is not God that we're really angry at. What we are running away from is a human-run, human-led organization. We are running away from a celestial plan's treasure 
that has been run and very often misrun throughout 2,000 years of history by very fallible human beings. Now, in today's gospel, we get this wonderful interchange between Jesus and St. Peter. Peter, when asked who he thinks Jesus is, he replies, what? You are the Messiah. You are the Son of the living God. That is definitely the right answer. That is exactly it. He nailed it. That is exactly who Jesus is. But Jesus responds to this confession of faith with what? He responds with sort of surprise. Surprised that of all the people in the world to get this, it's Peter who gets it. He responds by saying, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Now, of course, as you know, Jesus is playing a little word game here with, with the words Peter and rock. The Aramaic word for rock is kepha, kepha. In Jesus' own, then that would have been the language Jesus spoke. He would have spoke Aramaic. And so what he would be saying is here is, you, Kepha, Peter, which he's also referred to, as we know in other, uh, in other references in the gospel, as Cephas, Cephas and Kepha, those are kind of the same things. And, and on this Kepha, you are Kepha, on this Kepha, I will build my church. So on this rock, you are, ro you are the rock, Peter. On the rock of Peter, I build this church. Now, Depending on who you are, depending on your own spiritual leanings, this reading could take on multiple meanings. If you're more Catholic-minded, specifically if you're more Roman Catholic-minded, it certainly does seem that Jesus is establishing the Church of the Rock, of uh, the Church on the Rock of Peter. And of course, in that tradition, Peter at this moment essentially becomes the first bishop, and in Roman Catholic thinking, the first pope. Now. As a Roman Catholic, or as a, well, not as an, I'm not a Roman Catholic, as an Anglo Catholic, I, I have to say this. I don't personally hold that view. I actually do not hold that view at all. On this one, I'm a bit more traditionally Anglican on this. And the more traditionally Anglican interpretation of what this scripture is saying can be that the church is being established not on Peter himself, but on the rock of Peter's confession of faith. And I like that. That, to me, is what this is really all about. Either way, Jesus is commending the church to Peter and to his other followers. That is what's really happening in this. And this is important, especially when we examine who Peter is. Jesus commends his church to one of his most impetuous, impulsive, stubborn, cowardly human beings that he could possibly find. Peter, as we all know, is, on first glance, a wonderful example for us of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. He is the one who walks on water and then loses heart, grows frightened, and ends up sinking into that water. He's the one who, when Jesus needs him the most, what does he do? He runs off and denies him, not once, not twice, but three times. And then even after that, will not even go and bring himself to come near Jesus as he hangs dying on a cross. In many ways, that's it's just kind of the way it is. That's how we all are at times. But you know what? As I say, Peter might be really the best example for us of what followers of Jesus truly are than we care to admit. Yes, he is weak. Yes, he is impetuous. Yes, he is impulsive and cowardly and human. But who of us isn't? We all are, to some extent, at various times in our lives. We have been all of those things, probably. Who among us isn't finding someone very much like Peter staring back at us from our own mirrors? And the thing we always have to remember is that for all the bad things the church has been blamed for, and there's a lot of them, and validly so, there are also so many wonderful and beautiful things about the church that always, always, always outweigh the bad. Obviously, everyone here this morning must feel that way as well, or you wouldn't be either here in church or joining us virtually by live stream. Most of us are able to recognize that the church is not perfect. And I think that when Jesus commended his church to people like Peter, he knew that as long as we are here, as long as we are struggling on this side of the veil, it would never be perfect. Nobody's expecting it to be perfect. But that even despite its imperfection, we all struggle on together. I love the church, 
And I love the people who are in the church with me, sometimes even the ones who drive me crazy. And sometimes I even love those with whom I do not agree or who lash out at me for their own personal issues. Why? Because that is what it means to be a follower of Jesus. That is what it means to be the church. I am here in the church because I really want to be in the church. I am here because the church is my home. It is my family. It is made up of my friends and Jesus' friends. I am here because I, imperfect, impetuous human being that I am, I love my fellow Christians. And I don't mean that I just love Desmond Tutu and Michael Curry and all those nice Christians that we know. Those ones who are easy to love. I love those two who are hard to love. I love them because, let's face it, sometimes we are those people ourselves. Sometimes we are the ones who drive people from the church as well. And sometimes we drive our own selves away from the church. But as long as we're here, as long as we believe in the renewal that comes again and again in recognizing and confessing our shortcomings and in professing and believing what it means to be a baptized Christian, then we know it's not all a loss. As long as I struggle to not be the person who drives people from the church, but works again and again in my life to be the person who welcomes everyone, no matter who they are or where they stand on a particular issue, as long as I'm doing that, you know what? I'm doing all right. Because the church Jesus founded was a church founded solidly on the rock of love. The church's foundation is the, is the fact that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of the living God, and the message to us as followers of this Son of the living God, this Messiah, this bringer of freedom and peace, is that we must love God and love each other as we love ourselves. If we are the church truly built on a love like this, then without doubt, you know what? The gates, the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And as long as I'm here, and you're here, and everybody's here, at least virtually, we are going to make the church a better place. We need to be the church from which nobody wants to leave. So let us be the church we want the church to be, because that is the church that Jesus founded. Let us be the church that Jesus commended to that imperfect human Peter. In those moments when we find ourselves hating the church, Let's not let hatred win up. Let love, that perfect, flawless love that Jesus preached and practiced, let that eventually win up. We are the church. We are the church to those people in our lives. We are the church to everyone we encounter. We are the reflection of the church to the people we serve alongside. So let us be the church, and if we are, we will find ourselves in the midst of that wonderful vision Jesus imagined for his church. And it will be a truly incredible place. It will truly be the kingdom of God in our midst. Let us pray. Living God, we believe that Jesus is your son, the Messiah, who has come to us in our time of need. Help us to follow him, to be a church of love and acceptance and inclusion, and in doing so, a place wherein your presence dwells and the, the gates of Hades will not prevail. We ask this in the name of his most holy name. Amen. Let us now stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that he is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Hearing the word of the Lord, let us pray for all who suffer and hurt, saying, Hear our prayer. Hear, Hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the Holy Catholic Church, for this holy gathering, and for the people of God in every place. For Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury. For the Church of the Province of Southeast Asia. For Michael, our presiding bishop. For the Episcopal Diocese of Rochester. For Bishop Keith and the Episcopal Diocese of North Dakota. For the Standing Committee of the Diocese and the Diocesan Council. For St. Michael and all angels. Cartwright and those in the ordination process. In our local faith community, we pray for the Roman Catholic Diocese of Crookston, and for all who minister in Christ, and for all of your holy people in every place. Gracious God. Hear our prayer. For this holy gathering, especially for Father Jamie, our priest, for myself, your deacon, for Jean and Jessica, our wardens, and for our vestry, and for all of our ministries, for those who are present this morning, and those who are absent, that we may embody your love and acceptance of all people and continue to be a place of refuge for those who seek you. We pray today especially for Sarah and Cody Backman and Casey, Samantha Backman, Lily Baldwin, John and Kim Baird, that we may continue to be a place where all people may be fully accepted, fully loved, and fully included. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For those who cannot be here at this time to share in your body and blood, but who join us at this altar in your spirit, gracious God, hear our prayer. For all nations and their leaders, for nations and its leaders, and for mercy, justice, and peace in the world, gracious God, hear our prayer. For our city, and for every community, and for our families and companions, and for all of those we love, gracious God, Hear our prayer. For students and teachers and all of those returning to their studies, gracious God. Hear our prayer. For the sick and the dying, for the poor and the oppressed, for prisoners and their families, and victims of violence and abuse. Especially this morning, we pray for Josh and Greta, Pam, Darla, Joshua, and Brian. Gracious God. Hear our prayer. For all who are affected by the coronavirus, that they may find relief, healing, and recovery, and, this, that, and that this pandemic may end soon. Gracious God, hear our prayer. For ourselves and our families and our companions and for all of those we love, especially those in special need today, we pray for Michelle and Baby. We pray for the Nicholas family. Gracious God, Hear our prayer. For our own intentions, repeated either silently or aloud, I invite you now to share those prayer petitions. <coughs> Gracious God, hear our prayer. For those who now rest in Christ, and for all of the departed, especially for Joseph Adair, Carol Menzies, Brother David Allen, and Elaine Nicholas. Gracious God, hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with Mary, the Blessed Mother of Jesus, Stephen the Martyr, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to you, gracious God. Hear our prayer. God of glory, 
Receive all we, all we offer you this day as a symbol of our love, and increase in us that true and perfect gift. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us now confess our sins against God and neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in a thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please be seated. Well, I know we have at least one birthday she's still here, so she's got to get the prayer. Uh, our senior warden, Jean, here on your birthday this week, Jean. Yeah. Uh, are y'all excited? Yeah. Uh, sure. What are you doing? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's a surprise. It's a surprise? Is it? <laughs> Oh. It's always a surprise. Oh, well, good. <laughs> well, good. I hope you have a surprise. Uh, were there any other birthdays on the list? Uh, let's see here. Um, no, just no, Jean's that's happened. it. Well, if there's anybody out uh, live streaming, mention names of anybody who has a birthday. We'll be praying for them at this time. But we're going to pray for Jean specifically because she's right here. So, Jean, we're going to pray for you for your birthday. All right? We'll let us pray. Watch over your child, O Lord, as her days increase. Bless, Bless and guide, guide her wherever, wherever they may be. Well, she's here with us, but strengthen <laughs> us. <laughs> strengthen her with, when she stands. Comfort her when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise her up if she falls. And in your heart may your peace, which passes understanding, abide all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And a blessing on Eugene on your birthday in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And Jamie. Yes. What? My daughter. Your daughter Susan, well, we could have prayed for Susan. Well, Susan, I know, often watches us. Yes. So, Susan, happy birthday to you this week. A blessing on Susan as well. Uh, are there any other, are there any anniversaries or baptism anniversaries that are on the list? I don't think there's any. There is one, Jamie. What, there is? Because I was baptized on my first birthday. You were baptized on your first birthday? All right, Jean, we'll pray for you. <laughs> was this the one we argued about before? All prayers. Is this the one we argued over whether this it was is, a valid this baptism? Is the, this, is the, oh. Oh. this is the one we know happened for sure. Oh, this is the one we know happened for sure. Okay, yeah. I'm, I'm more comfortable praying for that one. All right, let's pray for that. <laughs> All right, Gene. In baptism, O oh God, your servant was received into the household of God and filled with the light of Christ. Sustain her gracious God in your Holy Spirit. Continue to give her an inquiring and discerning heart the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. May we walk always as children of the light and keep the flame of faith alive in our hearts. May we live each day knowing our true identity as beloved children of God. And when Christ comes, may we go out to meet him with all the saints in the heavenly kingdom to live with him forever and ever. Amen. And a blessing, Jean, on you on your baptism anniversary in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Very good. I think that's it. I don't think there's any wedding anniversary. Okay. Uh, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, also with you. you. Peace to everybody. Uh, you, why don't you do the offertory? That's the deacon. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. Thank you.
Prayer B can be found on page 8 in your bulletin or on page uh, 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel, be your people. In your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these days, for in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with the blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Stephen the martyr, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your daughters and sons. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have, Have mercy, mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God. This is the one who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this supper. And at this time, let us pray for all those who cannot receive Holy Communion at this time. Lord Jesus, be present with those who long to be here and receive your Holy Presence in this Eucharist. Come spiritually into their hearts and let them know your healing, 
loving, and life-giving presence, and never let them be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank mm -hmm. you.